everyone, welcome back to the A to B podcast, your number one source for military entrepreneurship. Today, like always, I am with my co-host, Barry Bull. What's up, Barry? How you doing, bro? Have we ever been in the number two spot? You said we're the number one podcast. We are that no, um actually, Have we ever so, dropped ratings went down? Well well, I mean, essentially, you know, when it comes to military podcasts, we're yeah. number one, but I think that we just got beat by I think it was Joe Rogan. I don't know who that guy is, but I think it's Joe Joseph. Rogan. Yeah, and then uh, like another podcast called like Impulsive or something like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Those dudes are freaking. They news. don't know what they're doing. But anyways, today, guys, we have a very special podcast because we got a first for the A2B podcast. We brought a female in. You know, we brought in Master Gunner Rashawn Jones, respect to her. But then today, we decided to bring none other, you probably seen her in social media a couple of times, than Jackie Barnum, newly promoted major. Congratulations, ma'am. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm doing great. Awesome. Well, pl thank you for thank you for being here. I know we have a very good uh, uh, and fun packed conversation going on today. Um, but essentially, you know, I want to I want to start off the conversation because there's a lot of people out there in social media that um, talk a lot about whenever it comes to veteran podcasts. But we try to be diverse. We don't try. We don't only like to bring in, you know, uh, veterans. We also like to bring in active duty personnel. What brought you into the podcast today? Um, you both. Honestly, I've been following Barry for a long time. He's like been there for me since my social media following really started taking off when I didn't really know what I was doing or the consequences or the, you know, third order effects of things. And yeah. he honestly gave me a lot of advice. And there was one week literally in my life, I think this was two years ago now at that, this point where I had... It was like the perfect storm of I had like complaints filed. I had this YouTube wow. video made about me. I was really? dragged over the coals on Reddit, literally all in one week. And I was just beside myself. And unfortunately, you know, like because there was a complaint, my command had to kind of investigate it or investigate my social media, which has happened now three times. Wow. And but, you know, I had no I truly was like, I have nobody to talk to about this. And I felt mm. like I mean, I, I at the time I was like, this is so new. The Marine Corps and the military has so few orders and few. So, you know, not very, you know, um, good guidance on how to do social media. Mm -hmm. So I was doubting. I thought I was doing everything the right way. And honestly, Barry was like the one that was like a good sounding board for me and giving me advice and saying, you know, just stay true to yourself you're doing the right thing um so that's really how i started our friendship which i really appreciate jackie's and... trying to make me cry <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, i was not ready for this <laughs> you were literally there when i had no one else because this was such a specific problem like of yeah. course you could talk to your family and friends but they don't really understand because they're not the ones putting themselves out there on yeah. social media um being the target putting a target on your back and yeah barry has gone through that and could really help me awesome. oh yeah so my question, my, I'm, I wasn't expecting, just so you know, I wasn't expecting the conversation start, to start off like this, but it usually happens in a conversation, right? And, and, and as you know, pro Barry probably told you, this is a very conversational podcast. Um, what made you want to go through all that hassle? Because think about, I'm thinking about it, right? Life in the military is hard enough. Life in the military for a female is hard enough. Life in the military for a female officer is hard enough. Life in the military for a female officer on social media, that's a whole different type of, you got investigated three times. What makes you want to go through all that hassle? I think ultimately it just comes down to the fact, I just put myself in my 17, 18 year old shoes. And when I was at the Naval Academy, when I was a second lieutenant, there was very few people that surrounded me in person that were female Marines that I could look up to and actually have a mentor relationship with. Like they, were, they existed, but they were kind of scary to me and unapproachable. Mm. And so I just want to be somebody that 18 year old Jackie can reach out to and set be an example. I'm not the only solution. There's every sort and type of person yeah. is needed. And I just want to be one type of person that someone can look up to and say, hey, I, I want to be that and I can reach out to her and she will respond. And we may or may never, I may or may never meet those people, um, but just being able to set an example and say, hey, like I'm a Marine, I have a life, I have, you know, I'm approachable and friendly and love being a Marine and I'm going to talk about it. Um, 
just setting that example on social media. It just didn't exist. Yeah, well, you got to think it's, you know, what you what one viewer does when they are watching your social media, your social media or mine. They're bringing us into their world. Yeah. It's personal. They're right there. They're watching you. They're looking at the screen, mm -hmm. right? And then something that, you know, like, did you feel accessible, right? Just having your social media, you feel accessible to people, mm -hmm. right? Like, yep. and one of the big things we always talk about why social media is so impactful. I mean, this is our first time meeting in person. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. But like she said, over a, a few years, we've talked many times over the phone about a lot of professional things. Social media was included in that and um, it connects people. And it for Marines, when you're in. The person that I looked up to, respected, that I felt like I kind of knew because I've been watching them. And the biggest thing, you're not in my chain of command. Yeah. Like you're not in my chain of command. You have no, there's no influence. I can get a no holds bar perspective and you're going to give it to me straight. That's, yeah, exactly. that's social media, you know, in a nutshell. And, um, I'm glad you have a social media. I'm, I'm really, she's, I, I, like I said, you're the most famous major in the Marine Corps. Who's more famous than Jackie? Can you think of anybody? I no. And she's never going to say that. It's actually really sweet because going through like the gate. I'll give the gate guard my ID and they I'll look at me, double take, and then I'll always I'll start driving away and they're like, ma'am, I love your TikToks. Or like <laughs> at, at dental, I had a Marine come up to me and say, ma'am, can you please help me find a mentor? Um, oh, wow. I went to a wow. ball, the third lad ball last year, a Marine from lad came up to me and said, ma'am, you gave me mentors on how to um, apply a MESA package. I just submitted my package and I just want to let you know, wow. like, thank you. And I would never have even met that Marine. You know, he recognized wow. me. And so that me then, you know, being on social media is already hard, but I wanted to make it a good purpose and actually serve Marines how, you know, and my mentorship program, that's how it all kind of started. Do you feel like you're accomplishing that mission of like, all of what you just said, you know, just putting it out there, being a, being somebody that people can look to. I do. I mean, I'm, we're all doing our best. I mean, do I have to do like lip syncing reels in order to increase engagement? Cause, oh, by the way, there's an algorithm that we have to understand in order to get followers and get engagement and to reach yeah. the most amount of people. Like, do I want to do those? No, not really. Do I want to do like dances with my, Mar I mean, sometimes they're super fun. And honestly, that's, they those, look like fun. You look like you're having a blast. Those act started as a morale boosting activity with my students. Mm -hmm. And this was during COVID and literally within five minutes, you can change the entire attitude of everyone, all your, so I've seen in person the great effect of doing fun TikTok sort of trending videos. Yeah. Um, but I have countless testimonials from people that have said that they've, you know, ha I matched them with a mentor. They've gone on to achieve that goal. And so those are things no people won't see, but like I see it. And that's why I continue. You know, you know, and again, I got to play the de devil's advocate. Diablo because the Advocate. way the way that I look at it when specifically the 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 story that resonated the most with me that the ones that you just spoke about is you were a dental marine you've never met in your entire life goes like ma'am can I find a mentor you as major or by that time probably captain barnum you were like oh yeah sure you're probably like yeah sure you know give me your information I'll put I'll put it up there me we're going to restart your ramos mentality i'm going like who the fuck do you belong to because i look at it as like that's a leadership failure i'm gonna show you you keep talking but i'm gonna give you a, a very interesting d dm that i got uh yesterday like that sergeant obviously couldn't answer questions which is yeah. and he had like you know hey i have someone that can talk to 
And I'm yeah. not part of that person's unit. I don't know what unit they're with or where he's located. Um, but just a devil's advocate, your devil's advocate, maybe it's a good thing. No, no, <laughs> but that, that's a different story, though. That's a different story. And the reason why, though, it's because um, it's it's good whenever because that's the way that i used to do it as well it's like hey listen i don't know the answer but i'll point you in the right direction and this person that i see on social media is the one that does it i'm talking about like a marine that is like no i just found you on social media it's like man like how about you have a conversation with your chain of command on that and then it's different if they they tell me oh well the chain of command because you're right and we were talking off camera where does mentorship fall in the Marine Corps. Or I'll in the DOD well, I'll in tell general. you part of the reason why it's because when you're in someone's chain of command, think about how bi a big of a barrier. When I was a sergeant major, think about how big of a barrier my desk is. You know, I'm keeping you over here. Not just figuratively, but literally. You can't mm. get close to me. But why is social media different? Because you wake up with me. We have coffee together. Dude, literally, I got a message. I've gotten messages, a, a handful of them. I was going to take my own life. And for two years, I woke up with you every morning and, and had coffee with you. Oh, and people crazy. think my coffee is stupid. They're like, what do you do this for? I'm like, because you don't know. Yeah. You don't know, you know? And when it's, you kind of like translate that to the Marine Corps and the military, it's personal. Yeah. Like we were talking yesterday, I, I, and I, I told Jackie this, I would work for you because why? Cause I don't care about what the haters say. You're not lethal. You do silly TikToks and silly Instagram. I don't care. I don't care what you know until I know how much you care. And Jackie is professional. She's fit. She's educated. She looks like she's fun to be around. She don't look like she's negative, freaking whatever over yeah. here at, at work. You know what I'm saying? She does not strike me as a kind of, of leader where I would go in there and she'd be like, you know what? You're just, you're so dumb. What a dumb question, Barry. Oh my gosh. You have <laughs> hit every branch on the stupid tree, you know, because leaders will do that. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, they're staring at you. So funny. it's a little, for Barry, <laughs> per, you know, and it's a little bit personal. I can pick up my phone. I know Jackie and uh, she's accessible. Like I said, see, because if a Marine wants to be an officer, I'm telling you right now, as a sergeant major, they do not know. the. They don't know the process. They don't know the process. They don't know when the messages come out. They don't know who to talk to. They don't even know what to start, when to start, how to start it. Are you talking about the officer? Yeah. They want to go oh. MESEP, whatever it is, you know, PLC, whatever the programs are. Oh, okay. They don't know. And when you have a Jackie who's on social media, they can go, boom, Naval Academy, talk to me. And yeah. you know she's got a bunch of friends who are yeah. probably prior enlisted, who are mm -hmm. Mustangs and all this stuff. Yeah. I have a whole database of people. And I'm actually proud of that sergeant because a lot of sergeants, when they, you know, or Marines, if you don't know something, you really, yeah. you just kind of say, nope, you're not, you're not, not in your future. Yeah. Or, or like, they'll why bullshit would you... them with an answer. My or, buddy told me. Yeah, <laughs> right. Or they get like offended. Like so many people that are enlisted that want to go officer, other enlisted. I've at least heard this. I, I haven't experienced this, but they get so like offended. Like, how could you? Why would you want to do that? You know, and it's like you're limiting and affecting that person's complete future and career and they'll just walk away and you know yeah I, I never used to get offended but as a sergeant major you know when i used to get really pissed it's the same thing that josh and i and all of us are talking about we dump on the staff and co community and it seemed like every time we had a rock star you got to be an officer but then the the ncos and the junior marines and then the officers are like staff and co course sucks and we don't invest in them we don't this and we don't that and it's like okay if he, if they're a good marine and I, I would never tell a marine to not if that's what their desire is put in an officer package i would i've never done that if that's what they want to do but i mean the way that i look at it, it's i don't think i think we talked we touched upon this subject uh before and then you know you can definitely jump in here is here's what the way that I looked at it, and he says some of the 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 advices that I used to give to the Marines. I was like, I want to do MISEP, MISEP, either MISEP or whatever officer mm -hmm. program. It used to be like, okay, well, let's look at it. How long have you been in the military? Oh, mm -hmm. I've been in usually, let's say, five to eight years. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's think about retirement wise. If you decide to stay in a sergeant major. How much are you actually going to cap at on whenever it comes to retirement? But let's say you do the MESEP program. Let's say two years from now you become a second lieutenant. After you go either MESEP or after you do ECP, whichever program, two years from now you're going to be a second lieutenant. kind of sucks because you're at the bottom of the to totem pole again. But think about it. Ten years down the road, 
whenever you are a major or mm -hmm. a captain and you decide to retire, it's either a major or a captain. Let's look at the retirement for a major or a captain. Yeah, but there's a lot of variables in there. It's a gamble. You could go enlisted to, I've seen Marines go from enlisted to officer, not get career designated and not retire. Mm. So you're kind of out. I'm more of the theory of do what is going to give you purpose, make you feel valued for the next, not maybe 10 years, because that's a lot to ask a 18, 19, 20 year old. Yeah. You asked me at that time, I thought I was doing my five years and getting out. I truly did not expect to still be in. Was that what was what required was five years? Yes. Okay. Yeah, five was year that like commitment. a Naval Academy thing or all officers? I think it's, I think it's Naval Academy for sure. Uh, I don't know about ROTC. They might have four. Someone will quickly jump in and correct me on that. Um, but our initial obligation was five years. Mm. And I, my career, I'm a logistics officer, and every billet that I've had and every duty station has been so nonlinear and so unexpected. And so I really take it one duty station at a time. So while it is important to look holistically when you're talking to a Marine and saying like, hey, this is what your life will look like in 10, 15, 20 years. Also just break it down to the like, okay, in the immediate future, this is what you're, yeah. it's gonna look like. And that's so much more approachable and less overwhelming and they're sure. actually Very likely true. to go for that next thing because sometimes you get like that par uh, paralysis from too much information so then yeah. you don't make any decisions yep. and then yeah. you're just stagnant and not progressing so Very i think true. there's a balance between what you're saying but also being like hey i see potential in you and i think these are the opportunities that we should go after and because yeah. you have a lot of potential yeah you got to have true. somebody to believe in you too that's important mm -hmm. right yeah. and at, like you said at 18 19 you know you got 18 or 19 year old priorities mm -hmm. and sometimes you have a, a leader they look at you and they go yeah you know you'd be great for this and then you go hmm, okay yeah i mean they had made me do the brs retirement system mm -hmm. was like introduced when i was five years or so in or and having to make a decision about my like retirement system when I was yeah. 21, yeah, I'm like, true. what? I don't know if I'm going to be in for 20 or not. So what did you end up opting? BRS. Okay. Yeah. Blended. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people did. You feel good about that? I don't know because I don't know if I'm still to this day. I don't know. Maybe I'll get it. get out in four years. Maybe I'll get out in 15 years. Did you have to obligate more time when you got promoted to major? It's not when you promote, but it's when you accept orders. Got it. So you accepted orders and then you had to obligate four more years. It's like just two and a half or two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's, 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 let's back up a little bit. I think we've got to cross points in our conversation, right? Um, we started the conversation that way because obviously mentorship, as we're going to resume it again at the end of the conversation here, mentorship is something that's very important for you. But um, essentially what I want to, um, what I want to go all the way back to is, you know, who were you before you joined the military? Where are you originally from? You know, what are some of the things that, that you like to do before, you know, you were just civilian Jackie? Typical overachiever. Um, very <laughs> just like a lot of energy. So my parents were like, okay, we got to put her in all the sports, all the activities. Um, I am left-handed. So I have like a creative side in my of my brain, which hello like social media like doesn't not make sense to people i've been making videos my whole life like honestly i love learning about that kind of stuff so growing up i did all the sports soccer tennis um for the most part i was the captain of my soccer and tennis teams in high school i was class oh, wow. president all four years what? you know That's i just impressive. like was one of those just i love doing a ton of things where was this at northern california so i went to high school in vallejo um okay. and born and raised in the same house that my parents still live in jackie's got a little thug in her i do you guys get, she's get, a little hillside a little hillside <laughs> out there get hyphy sometimes <laughs> um oh my gosh i'm embarrassed um and so going to the naval academy it really uh came down to me applying to art school and the naval academy and <laughs> those are two very different things yeah, yeah. wow yeah and I just had a gut feeling and I heard someone say, if you don't go to the Naval Academy, you're making the wrong decision. Mm. Because the Naval Academy
of my scope. I'm riding high, team captain, class president, and this could be. I think there's always that. I still feel that. I still, sure. you know, like as a young girl, you know, I convinced myself I won't get in. There's no, I'm not good enough. Um, but then once you kind of, this is an exercise I like still do because I do get hit with imposter syndrome. It's like you have to start naming the things that you've accomplished and you're like, read that out loud to yourself. And you're like, mm. well, that person, with, if you give it a different name, that person sounds very qualified to go to the Naval Academy. Oh, yeah. wait, that person's me. So like I actually have worked really hard and earned all, you know, yeah. 4.0 GPA, whatever, whatever, all these qualifications. I actually check all those boxes. That's me. Like I do belong to be here. And I do that as a Marine still. Yeah. So if you yeah. meet all the qualifications, go to the Naval Academy and you're coming out of high school, what's like the first step? Because everyone, I've heard people say this. Yeah. It's like, well, you have to have like an endorsement from like your congressman or something. I think, I think what I've heard, correct me if I'm wrong, you need to like walk on water at least three steps <laughs> before you can, before you actually <laughs> drown. Is that, is that correct? You actually levitate above the water. Okay, you don't that's what even it is. walk oh, on that's it. What you it just kind of glide yeah, thank above you for the it. Correction. Wow. Um, but you do need a congressman nomination. So oh, wow. that is like a whole package and you go in for an interview. With the congressman. Yes. And, or they have like a, I think I remember I, this was so long ago and I feel like I was in fight or flight the whole time. Heck yeah. Um, and it was like a seven people and you're like, I was 17 years old. Yeah, I literally had to be know, emancipated from my family to go to the Naval Academy because wow. you're technically what? like an E1 or whatever you, you know, wow. so you're, uh, there's that part. You have to do the physical fitness test. I remember doing that. Remember that physical fitness test where you throw a ball, a basketball, you're like on your knees and you throw. Oh yeah. 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 They yeah. made us do that. Yeah. That's like some PE yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they made us do all these crazy tests and full medical exam. Um, so yeah, once you start that application, you literally invest your soul into it because it's so extensive. Wow. So like if you didn't want to do it, that would weed somebody out. Right. Like if your heart yeah, wasn't yeah, in it. Yeah. Yeah. If your so heart, yeah. The very first thing they do, actually, if you're interested in the academy, is there's like an initial intake form and you just put your basic information and you actually get assigned someone called a blue and gold officer. So no matter what state you're from, you actually get assigned someone who is like kind of a liaison representative of the Naval Academy to talk to you about the application process. And they, you know, interview you and they have a little bit of an input in your application, but they kind of guide you along the way also. Yeah. Mm. How many people get accepted into the Naval Academy on a yearly basis? Do you know off the top of your head? I mean, I just know that my class was about 1,200 people. Okay. And I mean, I you hear crazy stats. Like, I don't know what an applicant, it could be someone just filling out the application, but you hear something crazy like 40,000 apply. Okay. So, what about women though? Women's got to be yeah, like know, way less. It's 20, at least 20 to 22% female. Very beautiful. The yard is gorgeous. Um, it's kept, you know, in pristine condition. By freshmen, plebes. Yeah. For, <laughs> um, I mean, I just remember wanting to stay under the radar so much, actually to the point where I only realized how beautiful that place is recently when I went back as a visitor when mm. i was attending there i felt like i was just looking down all the time i never took a second to like look up at the buildings wow. and be like oh my gosh this place is so full of history and tradition and i didn't i enjoy i loved going there but i was stressed for four i was so stressed out like we're taking physics and electrical engineering and wow. cal like three military ish yeah and so i just didn't realize how beautiful of a place it was mm. um, until now, but is there a fraternity over there? It the whole thing basically is a fraternity. <laughs> is a fraternity. The whole thing is a fraternity. Um, so no, there's no fraternities per se, but basically it's like the military. So it's 
we, there's 30 companies. So you're in a company, which is kind of fun because I was in eighth company all four years. So that is kind of like an identity. And it's okay. cool because you live, I was like, as a freshman, I'm, or a plebe, I'm living with my eighth company shipmates that are also sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So literally mm. on the same floor. And it's structured where you have um, a company commander, platoon commander, squad leader. So within that company structure. Those are your classmates? That's where they start. Or those are actual like senior. They're like upperclassmen. Okay, got it. Yeah. It's kind of like Hogwarts. Basically, it. it really <laughs> is. Yeah. Okay. So um, I do want to ask because obviously everything's like so structured. What about time off? Like, how was your time off whenever you were there? Because I can't imagine, like, I, I can't imagine being hard, but I can't imagine you be like, like super indulgent in like 24 7, 365 for four years. So, how was your time off? It really was like that where really? you had hardly and at least so each year you get more privileges you know okay. and so as a plebe as a freshman we had like sundays off where we weren't bothered but we couldn't leave base and we had saturday afternoons where we could leave base so we had to wear a uniform when we went off base so um, everybody knew you're a plebe yeah, yeah exactly and we had a typical christmas break or thanksgiving break but really like from the moment of zero five in the morning when you wake up for your morning workout with your company to 11 p.m which would lights out which they would come by and make sure that your lights were out every Miss Barnum, what's a E five in the Navy? And you have to like recite, you know, whatever they're asking yeah. you. You have to read three articles in the news: a sports article, a national news article, international news. And I'll be like, Miss Barnum, what did you read in sports today? You have to memorize menus. So like for three weeks out, they'll be like, What are we having for lunch on Friday? And you have to recite all twelve. Oh my items. gosh! Oh man. Um, Man, but, but you, you, you're doing like the like the senior drill instructor voice, you know, it's like, Miss Varnum. <laughs> like, did they treat you like shit at the Naval Academy? People are figuring it out. I mean, they in their own way, they like thought they were maybe. And it's just like an experiment. You know, you're, they're just trying to figure out what their leadership style is. And even still, they're 21 years old, 22 and so they don't really know except for what they how they've been treated. Yeah. And it's such like a little mm. like what's not a crock pot, what's the word? Like a thing that's Air gonna fryer? like a the we, a pressure cooker. Here we go, pressure there we go. I'm like not a crock pot. Yeah, but I just imagine like the scene from Dazed and Confused where the upperclassmen like come out and they're like the women are like Fry like bacon, little piggies, and all the <laughs> underclassmen. Yeah, <laughs> you know, oh, there's those and moments. they're throwing like I don't even know, like baby powder on them. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely those moments. Wow. But it's all a game. I mean, like, yeah, they're figuring it out. You're as a plebe, no matter what, when you're taken out of being a civilian, and you're put into a new environment, you're only given three phone calls. Uh, in three months to call mm. your family for 30 minutes you have to i had to cut my hair at the time they don't do that anymore i had to cut like, your own hair like no like the the regulation was my hair couldn't be longer than my collar for all females all the boys shaved their heads the girls had to cut their hair so i donated what year was this this was 2010 okay um so no matter what you're just stressed out to the max like so stressed does anybody quit and or is that even an option like yeah what? people definitely quit um when I was a company officer, so I was on the other side when my at my last duty station where I was a company officer at the Naval Academy Prep School, and it mirrors the Naval Academy. And what's interesting is the attrition rate is pretty low. You know, we had, I think, in out of 80 of my students, I think I had five leave. But it's mm. in the first 24 to 48 hours. That they decide that they are like like, yep. th like totally. This isn't for they me. For me yeah. I can't hand. I can't be without my phone. This isn't the lifestyle I want. I'm like this isn't. Yeah. The lifestyle. This is just an indoctrination period. But it's very. It's like if you, if a student decides they're not going to be there, it's pretty quick. 
And then the rest usually will stay for the rest of the time. Okay, now, for those people that are out there that might not know, do you get paid while you're going through the Naval Academy? If you are at the Naval Academy prep school, you are getting paid as, like, an E1, um, and you don't have any, like, obligations. So you're getting, I think it was, like, 500 bucks or a thousand bucks a month or something yeah. and then when you're a midshipman you technically are that's like a military pay grade that exists okay. but when you're at the naval academy you're basically they make you take this huge nine thousand dollar loan out for your uniforms so basically when you're a plebe you're getting a hundred dollars a month when you're oh a gosh. freshman you're getting two hundred dollars okay. three hundred dollars four hundred dollars yeah but so you, it's so you pay all that off by the time you graduate yes, or yeah, okay exactly yeah but think about it i'm pretty sure you guys have a galley there Right. Yeah. So you guys every, get to eat. Yep. Every meal paid for, room and yeah, board. See, so yeah. We don't have you, expenses. Really, yeah. So what do you really need the money for? You know what I'm a saying? A phone. Like, That's it. Well, yeah. Exactly. That's really it. So you're right. You do get paid, but but yeah, I never even thought about that as an issue because I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't doing yeah, anything. Exactly. During Nobody that. has cars. You can have a car when you're a second class, um, and when you're a first class, so a junior, you can have a car, and then as a senior, you can actually park on the yard. Mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, I know. Huge privileges. Yeah, but we've all seen the, the, the <laughs> Navy football games. Oh, yeah. And the midshipmen are in the stands just getting wild. Yeah. Who are they? They're throwing their caps. Woo! Yeah. And I'm like, where's those the. Mids. Those are not plebes. <laughs> Some are. Ooh. They're just getting wild. I just want to hit them. Oh, People always like, I remember someone sneaking in because we were those big, huge coats when it's cold, uh -huh. and someone would sneak in like a inflatable alligator and they would deflate it and like wrap it around their body so their coat was like you know bulging out and it's just funny honestly like to us that's fun and funny because we have so few ways yeah. to like express ourselves and like yeah. sh have fun we're like oh, okay if you're gonna sneak in like a beach ball to a football game like yeah who cares? <laughs> if, if you could say something to anybody out there, to any one of the viewers, you know, who who are some people out there that you think would be a good fit for something like the Naval Academy or, or something to that effect? Who would be a good fit to be a student? Yeah, like who should be, stop thinking about it and go for it? Mm -hmm. Great question. Um, I ultimately think it's people who will work hard and are used to working hard and not just being given things. And while it's good to be smart, that only gets you so far. At the end of the day, you have to be able to push past your limits and be able to be okay with failing, first of all. Be okay with putting yourself in a very uncomfortable position because you're going to fail, you're going to mess up. And that's the point of these programs of even ROTC and OCS and the Naval Academy, and even TBS, the point is to put you under so much pressure that you're freaking out. However, you still need to perform. Because mm. why? Because you are going to be an officer that's standing in front of men and women, and you need to be able to lead them and guide them and communicate with them while you are so stressed. So mm. if you're someone that just like crumbles really quickly under pressure or just completely breaks down and you're not willing to
enlisted advisor to the Secretary of Defense. SEAC, yeah, Chairman yeah. of the Joint Chiefs of yeah, Staff. Yeah, yes, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. So, and he said something that kind of quite didn't sit right with me. Say it he said so. He said the willingness and of our population is not there because of perception like the perception of, of what it means to really yeah. join the military yeah and he even went on to say to further explain that over i think it was like over 80 percent we'll put the clip up but over 80 percent of the population wasn't even qualified i can tell you right now i was a recruiter that is the biggest freaking bullshit that i've heard and i'm gonna explain why i had kids willing to go to be marines right halos valgus you guys know what halos valgus is mm -mm. halos valgus is um well the 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 um, like the bone that's crossing you know your feet right here that's called halos valgus right permanent disqualification from the military just because you have halos valgus you know how stupid that is MEPS, the Military Entrance Processing Center, is disqualifying nationwide, disqualifying qualified applicants just for the fun of it. And this is the reality. It happened to me while I was in recruiting. As a matter of fact, the reason why I didn't get out as a mass sergeant was because I called out the MEPS, the, the San Juan MEPS, for the dumb stuff that they were doing. They were taking, they were yeah. taking, they were taking for oh high blood pressure. Oh, you have high blood pressure. No, you freaking dumbass. Like this he's, 17 he's year old kid is freaking nervous. And then now you disqualified him for an extra month. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying, and then and then he comes back. By the way, if he comes back and his high blood pressure is is high again, disqualified permanently. Now he needs like a letter from the doctor, and he needs to do this, and he needs to do that. You know how freaking stupid that is. It's like so, sorry, major, black, respectfully. Don't shift the blame to the society. Shift the blame. Shift the blame to maps and the doctors that get hired on maps and the people that actually get get hired on maps because those are the people that are really that are really screwing. Up. And and the thing is, if you're if you're in the army, you're like, well, well, I guess we ain't make a mission. Well, I didn't do a follow up video on that on the uh, the navy how they lowered the ASVAB to like ten and all this, and people are, oh my gosh, yeah. we're lowering standards. You know, I think back to like the Korean War. We literally let people be marines when you signed your name on the dotted line you didn't go to boot camp you didn't go to boot camp you signed your name up you got issued uniforms and you went to korea now we found out that was not the best policy yeah. and so we standardized recruit training a lot more and solidified it um or you know you look back to uh uh what's the movie with cuba gooding jr where he's a cook and he's in the navy and, and then he becomes like a scuba thing no he or? he becomes a navy diver navy diver and yeah, which scuba, what, yeah yeah and it's in uh and you're, you're just like you know there's there's a lot of amazing people out there oh, yeah. who yeah they're not that well educated well you know what really pissed me off what really pissed me off was oh you're permanently disqualified from the marine corps yeah i had to break this kid's heart that came out to me he's like all i want to do is be a marine yeah and then all of a sudden it's like sorry brother you can't be yeah. a marine and then well, the army would take him three days later. We got first world problem issues, man. We're, we're able to disqualify people from the military whenever we want. Yeah. I mean, seriously, if, the, if Bush came to shove, we'd be like, can you pull this trigger? You're in the military. I wouldn't even say it's MEP's fault. I would say it's just really outdated, like BUMED instructions, because they're just looking oh, you're at familiar with that black process, and then. white. I mean, in that... I was told that I was non-commissionable at one point at the Naval Academy. Um, oh, wow. So, I mean, long story short, I had this thing called secondary anorrhea where basically, like, I stopped getting a period the entire time I was at the Naval Academy. No wonder. I'm stressed the heck out. That is yeah. what happens. Mm. Nope. You won't be able to commission. So my senior year, basically, I had a whole... They forced me to, like, get it, which was absolutely horrible um but was it I'm like, like a shot or something it was a whole i medications oh okay, it, okay. it was a whole like a thing treatment. yeah just okay. so i could get my period oh now she's commissionable again i'm like i'm sorry that is in the black and white instruction that said secondary anorrhea not commissionable yeah and so i ridiculous. you're telling me that i was working at the naval academy for four years just to be told that because there's like some writing on an instruction that Very hasn't true. been updated in i would have been 20 scared years. to death yeah, yeah. Very so true. MEPS is just simple. I mean, I like to, you know, they're just doing 
what the instruction says, and that is what is outdated. And yeah, what I'm saying is not endorsed by the DOD, of course. I'm yeah, not. no, no, definitely <laughs> not. She's not. She's not being endorsed by uh, uh, by the DOD. It's just my opinion. Neither, neither are we. Uh, but I guess that's a good thing for us. Mm. Um, now let's get back. Let's get back to you, Jackie. Um, you senior year, you get the green light for you to get your degree and for you to go into the military. How was that transition to be like? Oh my God. Four years of being at the Naval Academy are finally coming to a conclusion. Like, what was going through your mind? Me transitioning from Naval Academy to getting ready for TBS. Yep. I was so determined to just get to TBS as fast as I possibly could. There was an opportunity, which I still am not sure if I regret or not, but I basically gave up 30 days of free leave to go to TBS to an early class. Oh, my goodness. Because I was like, I have this momentum going. I just commissioned. I just want to get to the fleet. I want to get to the fleet as fast as possible. Um, and 30 days can really hurt someone if you're not disciplined. And I didn't even want to take that chance yeah. of just relaxing for 30 days and what, not be ready for wow. TBS and struggle for six months. Um, so I literally went, I graduated and I think it was two weeks later I was at TBS. Wow. And so I didn't even, I'm one of those people where I don't give myself chance a chance to think too much because then that's when we start talking ourselves out of things and our minds start getting filled with self-doubt and the did i make the right decision i'm like mm. nope let's go like no time to <laughs> dive and in what's it like when you're from the naval academy do you show up you're like hi my name is second lieutenant barnum i'm from the naval academy and or they're like giving you a hard time and they're like look if you're from the naval academy we, you know you suck is that and they fl like flick a cigarette off your chest or something <laughs> i don't even bring it up I never bring so it up. So nobody knows. No, unless you bring it up, which is why people from the Naval Academy. I thought have you guys this... wear rings. Right, right, right. So ah. we get these. We have. <laughs> I only wear my ring for the ball because it is beautiful and I spent money on it. But you know, the Naval Academy grads have that. The the ring knockers, or gotcha. all we do is talk about the Naval Academy. Most of us really don't. Most of us don't do that. But it's the few people that do get yeah. stuck in people's minds. Yeah. But never have I ever introduced myself as like I'm Jackie Barnum. I'm a Naval. Academy grad you know that doesn't come up in the first mm. I always thought it was cool one of my bosses was a Naval Academy guy he actually played football there Kenny Del Mazo he's a Colonel Select and um like he's one of the best dudes he's super funny and he had dude he's got this epic picture of him looking like Rudy playing <laughs> football like he, he really played and he's like and he was a good uh a good CO but that's okay so they don't know unless you tell them well I'm certainly like proud of it yeah, yeah, yeah. but it yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. define me or I haven't good. allowed yeah. it to define me like some people you know they just can't even in the high school those are like their glory years some people like the Naval Academy that was when they were in their prime I'm like that's a, just on my resume and I'm super proud of it yeah um did and some it adds your, to who I am did some of your bosses ever bring it up like in some kind of a staff meeting and you're like oh my gosh Jackie you went to the Naval Academy and you're like uh yes sir I did sir oh yeah and you're like oh gosh yeah that does <laughs> happen for sure yeah okay so you grab Be the one to ask for help but also as a leader pull people aside and almost like force them to talk to you because they're going to be shy and not super willing to be like hey sir like can i talk to you yeah see i've seen like for enlisted marines we always look at the officer community like the good old boys club 
But when being a senior enlisted, I used to hear it all the time. It's very sink or swim. You're already supposed to, you know, you're the leader, you're a second lieutenant. I'm not going to, I'm not giving you the answers. You need to figure it out. You need to stay late, come in early, whatever it is. Is that, mm-hmm. does that happen? It, it is. Honestly, I remember so specifically being a lieutenant in Okinawa and all the captains that surrounded me were so mean to lieutenants. And I remember talking to my staff sergeant at the time, who he's a lieutenant now. Wow. Um, he, and I said, Matt, like, if I, am ever, if I ever treat a lieutenant this way, please call me out. Like, I promise I will never talk to anyone like this way. Like, for what? Like, I'm replacing you. Like, I'm going to be, a, like, I'm going to fill that rank. So why are you giving me the cold shoulder, just giving me all these really meaningless tasks? You know what I mean? Like, Was there any value in it or was it just, this is the way we've always done it? Yeah. Or this is what was done? Okay. They call them, they're like, we're the council of captains. I'm like, what is that? That's like, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I was seriously remember. <laughs> wow, like, captains, this, yeah. come on. This is so clicky. The council is captains. Yeah. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> yeah. I just oh, went man, to that's like funny. That's like the last couple of underground to... book for like yeah. officers. <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. So that sad. E4 mafia, but for captains. Yeah, but yeah. for captains. Oh and my goodness. And I said, I was like, I never want to be like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nope. Yeah. Do you feel that you, because you look like a very nice person. Obviously, this is the first time we ever met. You look like a very nice person. But in order for you to get promoted to the rank that you have to be, you got to have some cojones. You got to have some sturdiness whenever it comes to, to, you, to your work. people any reason to doubt my you know physical ability so that's always number one because that's the very first thing that you're judged on is your pft or cft score so making sure i don't struggle with that making sure that my mos proficiency is where it needs to be making sure i'm doing all the extra pme all the extra things um, going to ews doing command i did command and staff already as a captain just to get ahead because i feel like i don't want to unintentionally close any doors. So I want to make sure I'm staying competitive and doing all the things as a logistics officer needs to do, doing the key billets and not giving people any reason to Command and staff is required PME for majors. Yeah. 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 You can, what do they give you an option of doing it uh, like in person or online? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's part of a board. I could go in person or you could do it. I did it while I was in Newport. So I went to the Naval or the um, Naval War College when I was in Newport and did evening classes for three years um, Jeez, on my own. And so, yeah, I just feel like as a female, it's just you kind of have that like you're kept at arm's distance right away. Um, whereas I just, you know, no one hard. I think one CEO of mine who does this on purpose to include make sure the women feel included will actually call women like, hey, sister, like, 
You never I, hear that. But you hear, yeah. hey, brother, hey, man. Yeah. But I'm, you, I'm guilty of that, by the way. I'm 100% guilty of that. And it's not that I treat people differently. It's just that, I don't know, my comfort level is not guilty there. Guilty of what? Like guilty you would of, call like, hey, brother, sister? Like, I call you brother all the time. Yeah. You know, like calling her sister, even though I, I, I feel that she is, you know what I'm saying? Like, I will call her. But I don't know. It doesn't come natural to right. me. It I'm doesn't. guilty. I'm and I don't blame you. No one. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I've only heard it from one other Marine ever addressing the women as sister um and the men as brother i well growing up in the marine corps i didn't want to be too friendly to women i didn't because i didn't want people to see me like you're trying to be shady or you're preferential to them because they're a woman yeah or whatever or you didn't even want to get some crazy allegation on you you know what i mean and i had seen someone who had a false allegation and it did ruin his career you know so that's a big aspect a lot of men don't talk about that that's a huge part of it yeah. Now um, we're gonna do a part two because I wanna I wanna deep dive into your s- very successful career that you've had, how you started growing up in, in in social media, and and I wanna get into some of the those investigations or whatever you know uh, um, that we talked about. Now I do have one last question for you because I'm guessing it's easier for you um, to s- put a stop at it because people are not gonna hit on a major. But they for well, sure are going to hit on... They for sure are going to hit... Well, it depends on the rank, right? But they're for sure going to hit on a second lieutenant. So when you were a second lieutenant in Okinawa, did you used to get hit on? Yeah. It was literally the... So I was in the BOQ uh, on Camp Kinzer. So all the, the the officer quarters, which was like, you know, a little mm-hmm. room. I was in Camp Kinzer too. Um, what year were you there? 20. 2015 to 17. Oh, I was there. I was there from 2013 to 2016. Okay. Where? Yeah, I was in DMO, Distribution Management. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So you were, you were probably like at the very end. I of was the... at CLR 35, which yeah, yeah. doesn't exist anymore. But Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Cool. And Supply Battalion, Mains Battalion. So yeah. um, it was just like, I remember so vividly where I was just got to Okinawa. Like I had my two suitcases. I didn't move like anything. I literally showed up with two suitcases and that's it. And someone else that lived in the BOQ was so friendly and wanted to help me. Like, let me introduce you to people. Let me whatever, whatever. Oh my god. Because it was literally like you're new and I'm like claiming you, basically. Yeah, wow. Is that as far as it like Is that as far as it went though? Was the arm? Yeah, because I was like out of here right away. I was like, You got out of that well that's like good like good on you. Yeah. Wow. And then I then but what's sad is that I'm like, well, guess I'm not gonna talk to anybody else in this boq or i'm not going to trust anyone else yeah because now it's like this guy has been here a while now he can fabricate whatever things he really want about you you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying and then all of a sudden you don't feel co- wow it's just like that day That's one day one crazy so that was disappointing um but fortunately there were other like women there that i befriended and i they just they literally warned me they're like yeah you can't
Beach, and um, this was in like the UAE. And you're not making any of the enlisted Marines like officers anymore. No, but you're like we were in our hotel and we had <laughs> everyone was staying in a hotel. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, everyone. there you go, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's what happens with your logistics. That's why logistics is freaking awesome. Albert's flexing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, logistics We're like, is oh, great. the Ritz Carlton is the only one that has like good security. <laughs> yeah, so we yeah, all exactly. got to stay there. Exactly. We're so sorry. Uh, the exactly. Ritz in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Um, logistics, guys. Look it up. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Long story short, you just can like, you just sense when people are icky. And so I knew, and I just. I say I put myself in the situation. I was simply existing, sitting on the bus, and there was a seat next to me. And this per- and this person, of course, sat next to me, was invading my space, getting just really too close. Well, hold on. Talking. What made you feel the space was invaded? Because I was getting talked to. Like, m- my space physically was like, he was in my space. Was like, he touching you? Like, his bot, like his side. You know what I mean? Like, getting close. This is uncomfortably a little bus. Close. And, um... And then I remember getting like cornered in the in like an elevator once by him. And I just remember being like, get out, get out, get out. You know, like I wasn't again, like in danger because it was an elevator. Um, But I just remember feeling very uncomfortable and being like, I need to purposefully distance myself from certain individuals because you can just kind of sense when they're looking at you a certain way. Wow. And I'm assuming this is a a more senior naval officer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he. Guys, listen, we're going to continue this conversation in part two of the podcast. Um, we're we're going to open it up, resuming this part of the conversation. And then from there, we'll switch uh, uh, gears and talk a little bit more about uh, Jackie's career and some information on how can females in the military can be more like Jackie. OK, guys, so I'll see you guys. Barry, where can people find you at? You guys know the vibes. Uh, Instagram, at Bull5277. TikTok, at Bull52772. Click the link in my bio. The call is free, and the change will last you a lifetime. Jackie, where can people reach out to you at? People can reach out to me on J-A-C-K-I-E-E dot Barnum, B-A-R-N-U-M. That's my Instagram. I respond to pretty much 99% of DMs. If you want a mentor, um, please message me as well. All right. Awesome, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's go. Let's go.